Good morning. It's a blustery uh, morning. I'm back up at Belfast Roselawn Cemetery on the Ballygan Road uh, running out of Belfast and this is the third video that I have done on Roselawn Cemetery. I was up with my friend uh, Peter McCabe uh, doing 20 graves, uh, giving a, a shout out to his uh, Roselawn Cemetery book 2021. The graves that I'm choosing are uh, of, of largely notable people, people that you'll probably know. And I hope you can hear me. Um, it's extremely windy here, but this is probably the most uh, visited grave in the entire cemetery here. This is the family grave of the bests and this is of course George Best's grave. And I have videoed this uh, grave before but I wanted to include it in uh, this set of videos. George Best Born 1946, regarded as one of the greatest footballers of all time, and many people would actually say that he, he, he was the greatest. I mean, George Best could, could alter the run of a game, you know, he had magic feet, and he could use both feet, and he just didn't know what direction he was going to go, and, and I mean, there's footage of him taking on three and four defenders and, and just going round them and through them and everything else and, you know it, it was unbelievable named footballer of the year in 1968 capped 37 times for Northern Ireland and uh, he, he was called the fifth Beatle because he had good looks and he uh, had a indulged in a, in a playboy lifestyle. Died November 2005. And it was absolutely fantastic what we saw of him. And he could have been even greater. He lived in the Craigie estate in the early days and he, he just was a he just was a celebrity bar, bar none and here he is and this is a well known politician, well known and respected politician who died in 2007, far too young, born 1953, the same date as I was born, so he'd be 68 now if he had lived. I think he was only, uh, what, 47, 54? Yeah, I think 54. An architect of peace and an inspiration to us all. From all sides of the community, you know, this man had garnered huge, huge respect. And there's his tree and it's quite big because he's been here some considerable time. David Irvine. A man worth listening to, and uh, like Mr. Stalford of the DUP, who died last week, sadly again, only age 39, a man worth listening to. 
And you say to yourself, and I've often said it, why do good people very often die young? It's hard to take, hard to take. And I'm wondering why I'm still here. And there's a wee seat here, and it's uh, again a tribute to David Irvine. Reflection. There is no greater gift to give one's country than the gift of peace. An everlasting memory of our dear friend, Councillor David Irvine, MLA. And I have searched for this uh, wee tribute long and hard, and I was way around the other, the other side, and I just couldn't find it. So I'd come on round, I'd given up, and then I spotted this as it was passing slowly on the deck, and I'm delighted to have found it. I'm in the S section of the cemetery here, and this is the grave of John and Minnie Elizabeth Keenan. And these, uh, their children, one of their children, um, was Brian Keenan. And you might have heard of Brian Keenan, because Brian Keenan uh, was captured and held in brutal conditions in uh, the suburbs of Beirut by Shia militiamen in 1986. And he was held in the Baca Valley for the next four and a half years. I think he was a, a teacher. Um, and I have read Brian Keenan's story, and it's, you know, get hold of that book. It's a story of endurance, and he was in with John McCarthy, um, and the conditions were absolutely horrible, and how these guys survived. And the book's called An Evil uh, Cradling. Uh, Brian Keenan now lives in Dublin with his wife and children and um, you know this is you know I remember this this whole this whole thing so well it was just horrible that an innocent man could be treated the way he was treated and he came through it to marry and raise children and good on them. This is another grave headstone that I really was keen to uh, film. This is a grave headstone of Paddy Devlin, one of the founders of uh, the SDLP along with Jerry Fitt. I think Austin Curry was probably in there too. But I had great respect for this man, so had my father. You know, this man was a real socialist. He, he, he hadn't got particular green trappings like the SDLP have today. And uh, Paddy Devon and, and uh, Jerry Fitt were unbelievable. Unbelievable characters. And, and Fitt used to sit beside Paisley on the plane going over to... Uh, Westminster and have a great crack. So I'm glad to have got uh, Paddy Devlin's grave. Even though the rain's pelting down on me. Former MP Member of the 1974 Power Sharing Executive, described as a relentless campaigner against sectarianism. Devlin had, been, had once been a member of the IRA, but later renounced physical force republicanism to work at transcending sectarian differences. And, and uh, very much uh, of the same cut from the same cloth as David Irvine who renounced violence as well and he was a 
a former loyalist terrorist. Good on those boys. This here is the grave of Artie Bell, famous motorcyclist, famous motorcycle racer, I should have said. And Artie Bell dominated uh, motorbike racing in Northern Ireland in the period uh, immediately following the Second World War. Uh, won the Isle of Man Senior Tourist Trophy in 1948. Won the Junior TT in 1950. Won the Dutch TT and Grand Prix and Swiss Grand Prix uh, later on. Owned a garage and worked on the Belfast Craigie Road. He was 57 when he died. The onward came far off his coming, Sean. Hardy Bell. Brilliant uh, Northern Ireland road racer. This is the grave of Dr. Compton Theodore Denny and his beloved wife. And you're probably wondering why I have uh, chosen to video this particular grave. This was Dr. Denny and Dr. Danny was a black doctor who practiced in East Belfast for many years and he had a surgery at 1 Ballarat Street and then 134 Ravenhill Road and I didn't know this gentleman but I certainly knew his son because he used to go into his shop all the time. Uh, his son was Garnet Danny born in 1931 and he became a professional heavyweight boxer and he fought from 1946 until 1960 winning 63 bouts, 33 by knockout, drawing 18 and losing 5 and Garnet Danny <coughs> owned the newsagent and groceries and all sorts shop at the junction of Gilnerhurk and Lower Braniel Road and I went into this shop all the time and I never knew that Garnet Denny was a heavyweight boxer back in the day. He was a big man. But I never put two and two together. And uh, my wife tells me that he had the photo his photographs up behind him in the shop and I never twigged. It just shows you how stupid, uh, you know, it just shows you how, you know, if you haven't got eyes to see, you won't see. But uh, I have fond remembrances of Garnet Denny's shop down opposite the uh, Church of Anne at Gilnerburg. And uh, this gentleman here, his father, you know, left a huge uh, mark on the community and he was a very popular doctor by all accounts. This is a multiple grave but it's the grave of Thomas Henry or Tommy Given. He was a stalwart in local track racing. In fact the Tommy Given velodrome over at Orangefield is named after him. I think it's probably the only velodrome, uh, outdoor velodrome in the whole of Northern Ireland. Uh, and you know, there, there's such an interest in cycling here and this man initiated an awful lot of it but there's such an interest in cycling here that it's sad to see and, uh, and know that there's only one uh, worn out velodrome. A memorial stone stands at the entrance to the track so this is this is Tommy Given. The track is 396 meters and it's it's banked and it's oval and it's surfaced in a worn out tarmac now. It was opened for competitions in 1957 
and enjoyed tremendous support. The un annual Tommy Given Memorial Race, promoted by the Maryland Wheelers, apparently still continues to this day. And this guy was a legend in cycling, Tommy Given, in Northern Ireland cycling. But it was named after him. Uh, he competed for the Maryland Wheelers and was a, uh, a former national track champion. And round up above the lake. And this is the grave headstone of Colin Rad McQuillan. Fell asleep August 2014. And he was a, in a band. And it says at the bottom, we're here for a good time, not a long time. When I first came across, uh, now somebody told me that I met a tot, Colin, I, I don't know. But uh, I first came across him in a, in a street art mural tribute to him. I, he formed the punk band Running Rat in the 1990s. And was a singer in the band, dying in his sleep. They were supporting Lars Fredrickson's old firm Casuals. The band's songs included Lost Generation, Divide and Conquer, Drunk and Disorderly. And uh, I have listened to some of this stuff. Uh, not my cup of tea, but, but you know. He certainly was very popular amongst a certain number of, of people. And uh, other members of the family are mentioned on the headstone. And if I ever did teach Colin, uh, because he, I think he came from the Beaver Estate, if I ever did, he, he must have been a quiet lad because I remember all the bodies. And here he is. And this is the grave of Helen Lewis MBA. But there's Harry Lewis in here as well. And there's Eliza Katz, mother of Helen. And she died a victim of the Holocaust with no known resting place. Not too sure where it was outfits. She was born in 1916 into a German speaking Jewish family in Trutnov in the Kingdom of Bohemia. She studied dance and philosophy in a German university of Prague. And in 1938 she married Paul Hermann, a Czech from Jewish family. Following the invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1949, the Hermans were sent to Theresien in 1942 and in 1944 were transferred to Auschwitz, yes, it was Auschwitz, and they were separated. Paul Hermann died in 1945 on a forced march, not long before the end of the Second World War, and Helen survived two selections. Helen's mother, Elsa, had been deported in 1942 and died in Sorbitor, Sorbitor extermination camp as commemorated on this headstone. After the end of the war, Helen began to correspond with Harry Lewis, a Czech with, with British nationality whom she had known at school and they married in Prague in the summer of 1947 and in October they moved to Belfast after the birth of their sons Michael Robin Michael and Robin in uh, 1949-54 um, 
Helen Lewis began to work as a choreographer teaching modern dance. In 1962, she started, started the Belfast Modern Dance Group. Her book, A Time to Speak, is published, was published in 1992 and translated into several languages and then adapted for the theatre by the great Sam McCready. In 2001, birthday honours, she received the MBA for services to contemporary dance. And Harry Lewis, her husband, is commemorated on this headstone as well. And this is the last resting place of Dr. Ian Ander Adamson, OBE, 1944 through to 2019. And uh, I'm not too sure what the writing at the bottom means. Um, it could well be uh, uh, any number of languages because Ian Adamson uh, was multilingual. It says on the top, the stone of the hound. Uh, apparently, he was uh, in uh, the city hall and a deputation or a visiting party of Indigenous, indigenous American people uh, were scheduled to arrive, and uh, when when Ian Adamson met them, they were absolutely flabbergasted and floored and surprised and and heartened because he was able to speak to them in their native language. This guy was an academic. This guy was really, really clever. Uh, it's a striking headstone. Um, with a tree at the top. This is a... Oh, I right, I've got it. This, uh, And I'm using uh, uh, Peter McCabe's book. <laughs> Sorry, Peter, I'm stealing from you. And uh, the, the phrase is from the Lakoto, Lakoto people of the North America, meaning all are related. He was born in, in uh, Bangor. He was raised in Con Lake, became a specialist in community child care, community paediatrics, and, the, and an officer unionist, a member of Belfast City uh, Council. He was Deputy Lord Moore, and then he was Lord Moore, and then he was given an OBE in, in 1999 for services to local government. Uh, MLA and all and uh, involved in many other uh, projects including the establishment of the Somme Heritage Centre uh, in a museum at Con Lake and he served as a member of the, oh he was very very big into the Ulster Scots and was president of the Belfast Civic uh, Trust. He was, a, he called himself a British Unionist, uh, an Irish Royalist and an Ulster Loyalist and he was 74, and uh, I remember him very, very well. So that's my, my wee wet trip round Roselawn Cemetery in Belfast, and it's, I believe it's the only cemetery that you can still uh, purchase uh, graves, and it holds uh, the crematorium which is in behind me, and they're building another one. and. I'm afraid, uh, you know, time did not permit me to, uh, you know, video all the other, you know, influential people that I l would have liked to have done. Uh, you can only do so much, folks. But by Peter McCabe's uh, excellent uh, trail book of the cemetery, and, uh, you know, Check it out and, and visit the, the graves of those people that you want to. It's a, it's a fascinating place of recent history. And uh, as I said in, in other previous uh, graveyard videos, everyone, every one of those folks, no matter whether they're great or small, was a mother's son. And every one of them, uh, whether you agree with their political viewpoints or, or, or or anything else, every one of them was loved and, and missed by friends and family. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that.